So finally, we're getting some hands-on time with the Wi-Fi Ranger Converge. Hello, I'm Chris from the Mobile Internet Resource Center, and today we are going to take a look at the new Wi-Fi Ranger Converge. We just got this uh, delivered via UPS. This is one of the very first ones to go out. And uh, one of the reasons it was late shipping is Wi-Fi Ranger has been talking about they put a lot of effort into the box and the packaging and the out-of-box experience, and it was actually that was late being delivered to them as opposed to all the new routers and gear and everything else. So we're like, what's the deal with this new box? Well, we just got it out here and we just took a peek and, well, it is kind of a fancy box. Look at this. And oh. they, they, they even quote our website on it. It's kind of... Notice it's not an endorsement yes. for the product. <laughs> no, nope, it is but, that uh, but, uh, internet is essential. But we love that they have a lot of respect for the work we do. Yes, and it is 90% recycled. They're telling you what to do with the foam. Um, and Wi-Fi Ranger in the past has always had a tradition of including Werther's Originals candies in all of the products. It's usually just tossed in there and with one of the packing peanuts. Now, they're kind of like little holsters in this. Pretty impressive. Guessing this little binder is all the manuals, your SIM, SIM card for the cellular, um, all nice documentation set aside here. Oh, that's just oh this is okay. So yeah, this little thing says show off your tech vehicle emblem. This is a nice vinyl three-dimensional sticker that I'm guessing you could put in your vehicles saying that you have Wi-Fi Ranger showing it off. Yeah, they're really trying to, to focus on being a premium product, and well, this is definitely a premium out-of-box experience here. So we first heard about this product and got kind of a sneak preview of it um, back in last February, February 2019, and now here we are in October 2019, and Wi-Fi Ranger is at last shipping it, and we can finally see this shark fin we'd seen pictures of so long ago. So this is the Converge, the heart of the Converge system is this fin that is designed to mount on the roof of an RV. Uh, it is a sturdy plastic shell, it's got the you know, nice Wi-Fi Ranger logo on it, and it has space inside of it for a lot of antennas. And it is designed to be kind of a, a mount it once on your roof type system or have RV manufacturers mount it there, and it can evolve over time. So. Once you mount this down either with screws or they actually recommend just using sealant and letting the sealant go through the holes and sealing it down to the roof so you're not putting any holes in other than for the ethernet wire. Um, once this is on your roof, you're, you're not stuck with the electronics that are baked into it. All the electronics are on a tray on the back that is removable. And we haven't seen the documentation on how to do this yet so we're not going to force it out. but. All the electronics are on a tray that can be slid out and replaced and upgraded to more advanced models. And, well, Wi-Fi Ranger is starting with three of these. So three things on your roof, they're all named after mountains. It is the um, uh, Teton and um, Denali. Denali and Everest, kind of going up high in height. So the Teton is the basic, and it is only $129, so it is a very affordable um, device for Wi-Fi on your roof and that does not have cellular built into it. It is just a Wi-Fi um, Medium range. It is actually the same electronics the same basic modem chipset and Wi-Fi as the current Wi-Fi Ranger core their current low-end device, but only $129 on your roof and Upgradable and that's the one they're hoping a lot of RV manufacturers will start to bundle What we have here is the Denali and well of course because it's all the same plastic shell You can't tell the difference externally the Denali is $449, and it actually has integrated cellular and um, cellular and Wi-Fi. It is the, basically the same hearts as the Wi-Fi Ranger Go AC, so they're high-end um, current indoor router. Um, but it does not have uh, 5 gigahertz. It is still just a 2.4 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi, but focused on long range. So more comparable to their Scott current um, Sky Pro models, um, but in this upgradable form factor and with the cellular built into it. And then the Everest, which will be coming out in early 2020, is going to be their uh, King Kong device. It's 799 
and it has a built-in CAT6 cellular, so a more advanced cellular modem. It's actually going to support dual cellular modems in, up on the roof and um, a more powerful dual band 5 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi setup, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. So, um, but whatever you start with, you'll eventually just be able to swap out the trays and do an upgrade later. So it's a, a flexible, interesting architecture. Should be rugged and designed to live a long time on an RV roof. And it also is available with a white shell as well as black, so you can uh, match the look of your RV. Um, this Denali we have here is actually an upgraded model. They have an option to add a CAT6 modem to that as well. Um, uh, up, uh, the upgrade cost we have not seen published yet, but it shouldn't be too much. We actually would recommend it. If you're going to have a modem on your roof, uh, go for CAT6, um, and uh, hopefully it's not too, too much more above the, the 449. Um, so this is what's the, the roof side of things. And let's see what else we got to look at back here. Um, it is all connected via this one cable that you need to route to the indoor of your RV um, that comes out from the back of the tray. And this is what a Wi-Fi Ranger is calling a tether point cable. And it, you know, in the past, Wi-Fi Ranger has just used power over Ethernet, so a single Ethernet cable to power their roof-mounted devices. And they've had trouble with that. They've had trouble getting enough power to the roof over Ethernet. Well, Ethernet wires are too narrow gauge um, for the um, relatively low voltages they're using to deliver much power. And one of the support headaches Wi-Fi Ranger customers have had, have had in the past is uh, basically power brownouts when there's uh, too much power being drawn and the RV voltage is low. Your Wi-Fi gets unreliable. Your Wi-Fi Ranger on the roof gets unreliable. Um, this should theoretically solve it because in, in addition to the Ethernet cable, they are no longer trying to do power over the Ethernet cable. They have a bonded um, second DC cable that is basically merged into one into their tether point cable. And so they'll be offering this in a variety of sizes, I think ranging from 14 to 30 feet. The higher end models come with the 30 feet cable, the lower, the basic model. Uh, the Teton only comes with uh, 14 feet, but you can um, request and pay a little extra for the longer cables, and I think they can even do longer still. Um, but you've got a lot of flexibility in mounting that and getting this inside. And another reason for the have, wanting extra power up top is Wi-Fi Ranger, while well, they called this the Converge because their initial plan was that this was going to have uh, HGTV, AM, FM, radio, and actual, this these screw-in points on the top are to mount a pivoting base that could have an aimable antenna. All these uh, uh, extra modules that they're planning to you know, offer over time as upgrades and also to RV manufacturers to build into an RV so they don't need to have a separate TV antenna and AMF antenna and everything else around. So those those extra components need more power. So another reason for tether point. But there's also a bit of a catch. They did discover that maybe converging all the things wasn't such a great idea in that with the higher end devices, the um, Denali and the Everest, the Wi-Fi is so powerful it could actually cause TV interference. Uh, so they don't recommend and TV and AM and FM be integrated and added on as upgrades if you have the Denali or Everest. They're only really focusing that on the Teton and primarily RV manufacturers that want to build all that in. Because if you're adding this to your RV, you probably already have TV somewhere else. Now, on the inside of the tether point, how, how this power actually gets there, the other end of the cable, you've got Ethernet, and then you've got this little barrel end connector, and they give you... Uh, Basically, a plug here that then gives you a fused wire and a ground wire, and you could just splice this into your RV 12 volt system, and they even include a simple little quick splice that um, powers that. Or for I believe it's a five dollar extra option, you can get a AC power supply and uh, power it on via there, and that will have this working and up on your roof and the Wi-Fi Ranger roof units are completely standalone. They don't need to have an indoor router. They can do everything themselves. You connect to them via Wi-Fi. Uh, they share your share the remote Wi-Fi networks and the cellular networks they have and um, you know do double duty of both catching that remote Wi-Fi network and creating your local private network. But there are a lot of advantages to also having an indoor router and this is actually something that Wi-Fi Ranger has always excelled at is having an indoor router and an outdoor uh, roof mounted, a long range unit, and having them kind of work virtually together as one. And so that's where the, the inside lineup of the new Wi-Fi Ranger product line comes in, the tether point routers. And um, we have here the spruce version of it, but they, this is the kind of the middle of the product line. So the indoor routers they have now 
are um, the poplar, um, aspen, spruce, and sequoia is going to be the, the higher end one coming out in 2020. So trees are a little hard to, to, to keep straight. The poplar is a, a basic device. It's basically the equivalent of the Wi-Fi Ranger's current core. It is a, but it's actually only still um, you know, kind of a, a basic indoor router. Um, one the interesting things that it has though is it actually has support for an internal LTE modem so you can add built-in cellular to it and they will sell that as an upgrade and it's a very affordable package uh, you work your way up to the Aspen which is the same thing but um, a much more advanced uh, quad core uh, internal CPU faster Wi-Fi and then you go up to the Spruce which is the Aspen but without the um, extra without being a big box that has space for a cellular modem in it, it is a tiny, small thing, more similar in form factor. This is the Wi-Fi Ranger's old Go AC. So the, if you're just trying to find something that'll fit and tuck away into a tech cabinet and doesn't have a lot of antennas crusted around it and stuff, and you don't worry about cellular inside because you've got cellular on your roof or you're getting your cellular via tethered USB devices, these work out great. You don't need to have a bigger router with antennas sticking out of it like a porcupine like the rest of the in, in, indoor Wi-Fi Ranger ones. And the Spruce is even smaller than the Go AC, but more capable. So dual core processor versus quad core processor. Actually, I think this might have been a single core processor. So uh, two to four times faster processing power here and um, you know, a more advanced uh, Wi-Fi radio. So we're intrigued to see just how well the Spruce performs or the Aspen when it comes out. And then the Sequoia will be you know, the, the big Cadillac with support for dual cellular modems and um, even more capabilities. But what they sent us is the Spruce because we like the small size and well, we're currently in a van. And well, how do you power the Spruce? How do you connect the Spruce to the roof or any of the, your units to the roof? And in the past, you know, when Wi-Fi Ranger was using power over Ethernet, they had one special Ethernet port that when you connected the roof units in, all the power went through this and then you just plug this into the wall. But that was leading to the problems. So now, you just plug this in and it's just a regular Ethernet connection. There's no power going over this. So now you need to get power up to here and to here. And you do that with a little Y cable that they give you. So you've got this Y cable right here. Put one end going into the tether point cable. One end goes to this cable extension here and that'll go power over here and now at the other end you can still have the same two choices so you can either put in the DC thing and tie it directly into your RV's DC system or do AC power and power the whole shebang just by plugging it into the wall so it's a Pretty simple thing, you have only one power supply, one power source to worry about for both your indoor networking and your outdoor networking. Um, maybe perhaps not as industry standard and elegant as power over ethernet, but it's definitely a, a workable solution and very simple to integrate into an RV's electrical, whether you're AC or DC focused. So we're going to be setting this up and giving it a try and uh, um, doing a lot of uh, uh, hands-on testing with this to see how this compares to Wi-Fi Ranger's past products, which have had a long, good track record. Um, the new ones seem to be more capable and are actually even cheaper across the board. So we're intrigued by the new product line. Uh, we're intrigued by the new capabilities. We're intrigued by Wi-Fi Ranger getting into doing cellular. Um, and we'll be checking out how all this works and comes together. This is still early days. These are barely... Uh, um, yeah, fresh, fresh off, fresh out of the box, uh, fresh out of the oven. Uh, we expect some rough edges as they work through the beta testing, but um, we'll follow along. I will be sharing our hands-on experiences, specifically with our Mobile Internet Aficionado members of our site. So if you want to follow along, join us at mobileinternetinfo.com. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our Mobile Internet Aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.